Hi, I'm Fesk, I'm a 3D artist based in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. My work has this surreal vibe with a signature color palette of red, blue and purple. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how I did this artwork uh, using cloners and effectors inside Cinema 4D with Redshift Render. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I start off just by placing a plane on the scene in a little camera group with a target. Um, and the idea here is just to get like a really simple shape so we can clone it around. So I'm deleting uh, half of the shape that I chose with just because I'm aiming for a symmetric composition. So ideally having a shape that works well, like both sides, it's helpful. So this is actually uh, kind of cool. Like I added a redshift camera tag to the camera. So if you see, this helps us to get this uh, fisheye look. I'm pretty sure that you can do the same with Octane. I'm not sure if you can do this with the standard Cinema 4D, but uh, uh, if you don't have uh, any custom render engines, you can always super increase the FOV of your camera on the standard uh, uh, Cinema 4D and you should get a similar uh, look. So getting back to it, uh, this is really cool because like um, it helps us to get a really wide uh, and big field of view on the scene. So right now I'm just messing with the angles and the position of the cloners and the way that they clone stuff. I added a symmetry node so everything that we do on one side will be reflected and mirrored to the other one. And once again I'm just duplicating the cloners and finding out a good composition by messing around with the parameters and the cloner. This is the beauty of using cloners in Cinema 4D. You can get really nice and interesting and surreal results really fast just by messing around with the, uh, the parameters of the cloner. Right now, I'm just, uh, I just added a HDR and once again, duplicating the cloners and messing right now with the scale so we can add some smaller ones closer to the camera. I actually decided to change the shape a little bit. And if you really put in the time into this, you can do with multiple completely different shapes and stuff and make the scene super detailed. I went with a more, you know, more simple route and kept the shapes pretty similar per se. So once again, duplicating the cloners and trying to find a cool composition on the side. Unfortunately, <laughs> duplicating the cloners to the top of the the composition right, the right and the left top corner didn't help that much. So I shifted to a more center composition on the cloner too. Um, and now I just toned down the HDR so I can play some custom lighting in the scene. Uh, the idea here is to get either centered or symmetric lighting in a way that emphasize the silhouettes of the shape. So you will see right there, uh, the way that I'm lighting this, it's really, really uh, emphasizing uh, the shapes. Um, oh, this is actually quite important. You will see that as soon as I added a reflective floor, the lighting uh, in the back, the rim lighting was instantly reflecting on the floor. So the way that I, <laughs> that I went around this, not only for the rim light, but to the HDR uh, with the HDR2, uh, if you click on the lighting and go to the projects tab, you can actually include objects in which the lighting won't be, won't affect. So I did that both to the main rim light, uh, in the center of the scene and the HDR. This way they won't affect the floor directly, but the floor will still be reflected. Um, right now I'm just adding like some textures with a ramp node just to add to the roughness channel of the floor, adding a little bit more detail and use the ramp node to get a little bit more uh, control. Add a normal node too, changing the scale of those textures just to make sure it matches the scene. Um, and right now, yeah, I decided to add like a center uh, neon light just to, so we have like a center focal point in the scene. Uh, ended up scaling this way, way, way to the top, mainly because of our wide field of view. So like the placement needed to be uh, good. Um, as you see, I'm doing some fine adjustments to some other cloners in the scene. 
making sure that the, the beam of light is well positioned. So right now it's another cool thing that I do all the time. Like you will see uh, that I added a, let's stop right here <laughs> real quick. I added a curvature node to the material of the blades and the cloners. And the, the blade material is pretty much the same of, uh, as the floor one. But I added a curvature node as a way to isolate the edges of those materials. So I can create a material blender in Redshift. And this way I can stack multiple layers of uh, materials. Uh, and I'm using the curvature node as a mask to the second layer. So uh, let's go back. Uh, to the recording and uh, you will see that this uh, gives us a little bit of like uh, more reflective edges and it's really really subtle but it helps getting a little bit more detail across especially in the edges uh, and to emphasize even more that effect i added a bevel deformer to the cloner this way we have smoother edges and the curvature actually works better Let's stop right here real quick. I just suddenly imported uh, this male model into the scene. Uh, these models were created using Adobe Fuse. It's a pretty cool pro uh, cool program that you can use. Uh, you can, the, the, it's fully integrated with Mixable, so you can animate those too. So what, I, what I've done for my personal workflow, I've exported a bunch of them. I posed a bunch of them and then exported multiple FBXs. So, it's basically like some some little toys that I can import into the scene and they're ready like post. Uh, it helps a lot with the workflow as a whole to to put these little guys in the scene and get a little bit more perspective. Uh, going back to, into the recording, uh, I'm just placing it on the center of the, the composition. Once again, this helps a lot to get us a little bit more of like scale and perspective. Uh, so I decided to add a little sphere to the top of our um, beam because I thought that composition-wise, uh, everything in the scene, from the perspective, from the lens distortion, everything was pointing up, but uh, we didn't have a resolution per se. So I wanted to add something on the top so we can guide the viewer's eyes to the top and get a resolution to it if that makes any sense. Uh, right now I'm just messing with the lighting and now I'm st I started adding color. So you see that the color is the last thing that I do in the scene. And the way that I add colors is always making sure that one, it kind of makes sense. It's not like accurate per se, but like uh, ideally it want, you want to do interchangeable colors. So I, as I'm doing uh, blue and the sides, the center will be red, right? So it needs to make, to make a little bit of sense using contrasting colors as much as I can. So the center will be red and the edges will be blue. And I use some purple lights in between just to make sure the transition between those colors are, are smooth. So right now I added a, a fill light to the center just to make sure that like the lighting uh, was matching. And of course, I changed the white from the beam to red. So <laughs> th this was a really tricky part to get like the the, the perfect uh, blues because it wasn't matching at all. But yeah, so the sphere was blue and just like the, the top of the beam. So this is something really uh, cool that I added. I decided to add a little bit more to the scene. So I added this disc. And you will see that I added a full on uh, incandescent material, right? So uh, this is a really cool node from Redshift. It's called Wireframe and you can get a really quick and good mask of the wireframe of the material of the model. So I added a wireframe node to the material of the disk just so we can get this, uh, this lines. And then the idea was pretty much to extend the lines a little bit more uh, to get this really nice effect. And due to the distortion of the fisheye lenses, they seem to be curved, but if you look to the viewport, they're not. Uh, notice, uh, let's pause right here real quick. Notice that uh, as soon as I extended, uh, the, reflect the reflective material of the the cloners and the floor was picking up the the white of the the streaks on the disk. So I added a, a 
redshift tag to the object and I disabled on the redshift tag the viewable uh, on reflections. This way, uh, it won't affect the reflections on the scene and it won't mess up with the, all the lighting that I've already planned. Um, so right now I started adding a little bit more uh, of textures to it in a way that I can use the texture to mask out the, yeah, add a little bit of roughness per se. So I'm using color composite nodes uh, to mask the wireframe with the, uh, the texture. So it adds a little bit of roughness to it. Uh, and yeah, it's looking pretty damn cool. So yeah, it seems that we're approaching like the end of the scene. So right now it's just some fine adjustments to like the shapes and the, and the lighting and making sure that everything matches uh, overall. So I'm now adding a little bit of a purple and pinkish uh, light, lights to the center, just to make sure that it uh, the, the lighting matches a little bit more from red to blue. So yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I hope that you like the, the process of creating this artwork. And for more, please keep your eyes open for future videos in the NVIDIA Studio YouTube channel. Bye-bye.